Well, thank you very much. I'm truly honoured. Um, and I, I do notice that Greg's wearing the same suit as I am, so I appreciate that as well. And support. Um, firstly, I, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land, uh, the elders past, present, and emerging. But also, I'd like to acknowledge the Indigenous comedians and true happenings of Artsakh. Artsakh has been a medium for centuries, and just because the Aziris decided to seize it doesn't change that. And we see the streets, we see the towns which are empty apart from Aziri soldiers, and we all know, and the world knows, who really should be inhabited and will be again one day. I'd also like to acknowledge the Indian National Committee leadership, Greg, Michael, everyone uh, who's played a part in the ANC over these years, which I've been involved with the Indian community, the church leaders which are here, also acknowledge you and the leadership you give. My fellow parliamentarians and councillors, I won't go through all the lists, we all know it is, it's a very long list. Uh, some who have become good friends of mine more recently because of the time we spent in Armenia. And I look forward to going with them again to Armenia and to Artsakh today in the future. Parliament and 
the now Minister for Monocultures of Steve Camber, stood with me to make sure that Labor MP, Liberal MPs, and whoever else they had to talk to went across and voted in recognition of the last act. That's a precedent which I think was made in our parliament, which then would flow on to other places. And then, of course, the official delegation in 2019, the first time I went to a media and went with John Alexander, my new good friend, across into Artsakh, where we met with troops, where we talked to the leadership there. We saw this beautiful mountainous country and we saw the bravery and the defiance of the Indian community in Artsakh. And then in 2023, I was looking forward to it so much, that trip. I prayed with my wife, Bettina, and our children to go to a meeting, to go to Arsac and go walking in the mountains. The Aziris changed that plan, as did COVID. But in 2023, we arrived with New South Wales MPs and for the first time, Victorian MPs to visit Armenia. And unfortunately, as Michael and others have already said, and as you know, it ended up becoming a time of sorrow and great turmoil. We watched 120,000 Armenians cross the border in three days. At their heels, the Aziri military, a dictatorship that wanted the land of Karabakh, as the Turks call it. They wanted Armenia. They want Artsakh. And we had to do whatever we could. And amongst those MPs, some of them had never really travelled much. They had not really not sure what Armenia would entail. Every single one stood up. Everything we asked of them, everything that was put to them to help, they did. Whether that be packing aid, whether that be doing media interviews and posts. There was donations by Ryan and Willoughby Councils to buy aid for those communities, that community. During lockdown, I was on the phone to every single day while I was there when it was happening. We then organised half a million dollars in aid from the federal government. These were people, new colleagues, new friends, who stood up and were counted. And it's interesting to note that since that time, since we've come back, since we made our promise to the media and continue to address Parliament about what we saw what happened, the Ambassador of Azerbaijan has written to both Premiers, to Victoria and New South Wales, as they've gone and written to both Speakers of both Parliaments, condemning our action and our promises. Well, yeah. Tell you that part, there are motions going before the New South Wales Parliament next week. And I hope I'm not giving anything away, but I know that the Victorian Parliament will soon establish a parliamentary Friends of Armenia in that state. We will continue on. And every criticism which is made by the Azeris or made by the Turkish government against us will just make our resolve harder and firmer and more focused. So, in conclusion, I just want to talk about the future. What I think what needs to happen. We saw over the last two years, particularly over the last four months, especially over the time which we were in Armenia, a great betrayal. I call it a great betrayal because it was. We saw the Russians do nothing after years of promises. It was so evident, evident that the two dictators of Russia and Azerbaijan had done a deal to divide up Armenia, to take Arta. We saw the Israelis give technology, drone technology and other things to the Azeris, people that should be their enemy, that has no time for places like Israel. We saw Hamas attack Israel and Turkey and Azerbaijan congratulate Hamas. And then this week, Israel sells missiles and a missile and a weapon shipment to Azerbaijan. What a betrayal. We saw the support of France step up. We saw more by the US and by the UK and by the 
EU. Finally. And that needs to happen and hopefully will build. We see, as you know, discussions about the immediate government pulling away from Russia, focusing more on the EU, more on the US. Let's hope that happens. Let's hope that, that the Europeans and others realise the importance of the media, the importance of the democracy. Because we saw a democracy die when Artsakh was occupied. Let us make sure that Armenia is protected and the Azeris and the Turks don't divide it up like they wish to. I look at what happened with Artsakh and I try to find something positive. To me, what was positive was 120,000 Armenians were saved. 120,000 Armenians were murdered, like was done a century ago. Their lives were saved and they continued. And we must continue to support them and continue to support their right of return to our family. We must also call on the release of MP, military community leaders held prisoner by Baku. We saw the relish of the dictatorship when they, when they arrested and put leaders, MPs particularly, in chains. They must be released and not put on some show trial. And we must continue to raise awareness of the cultural destruction of Armenian churches, Kachars and heritage at the hands of the Assyrians. And one thing in particular which I want to see happen in this term, and that is the Commonwealth Government of Australia recognise the genocide. We must continue to lobby for the establishment of a permanent Armenian diplomatic mission in Canberra, Sydney and Melbourne. And we must push, and I will work with my colleagues in other states to establish parliamentary friends groups in all state parliaments and have all state parliaments recognise the genocide in Australia. And I look forward to another official visit to Armenia. In fact, I've already been chatting with Paul Fister about that tonight. And I look forward to seeing that happening as well. And this time, we won't just take Victorians, we'll take our federal colleagues, maybe some West Australians, some Queenslanders and a few others so they can see, so we can get their support. Protect your family here and in an ancient holy land of the 